Hey guys, do I have a big one for you today? Create Studio finally got a huge new update. It has been a minute since we got an update from Create Studio and now I can see why. Because Create Studio 3.0 has some huge new upgrades. Let me list some of them out for you today. We can finally fully customize the appearance of 3D characters in Create Studio. We can even make them talk in sync with voiceover that we record ourselves or with AI generated voiceover right here in Create Studio. And we can even rotate them around in 3D space, plus some other upgrades as well. Let's dive right into all of it. But before we do that, if you like what you see today, I will link to Create Studio down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. All right, let's dive right into it. All right, here we are in Create Studio 3's UI. It might look a little bit different to you than the last version of Create Studio. Let's start by creating a new project. And I am going to go right into backgrounds and search for a warehouse background. That's gonna be the scene that we're working with today. I'm in a shopping mood because it is the holidays. Now, in addition to the customization of 3D characters, one of the other updates that Create Studio got was some improvements to the workflow. So right now, instead of just dropping the scene into my canvas here, I can actually just drop it right into the timeline. That's new. And I'm gonna scale this up. All right, let's get to the magic that I know you're most excited about. Let's go back to the Studio tab and we're gonna look for this guy here, 3D Creator. And right now there are two fully customizable 3D characters included in Create Studio. And they say they're gonna be adding more and more and more people here, but you can do a lot with just these two characters. So let's select the first one here, Tom. And I'm just gonna drop him into my canvas. And once we've dropped him in and we select him, we get this new pane here with all of these options. So we can change pretty much everything about this character except for his body type. So I'm gonna select top and you can see if I scroll, this particular character has a lot of different options for his outfits and some of these options you'll notice have logos on them you can actually customize the logo so because this character is in a warehouse i'm going to dress him in this t-shirt we're going to come back and customize this a little bit later for bottoms let's select these long shorts for shoes i'm going to give him some construction boots i'm not going to give him a hat but i am going to change his hairstyle and his facial hair and his eyebrows and for accessories let's get some headphones around his neck and now let's get into some of the even more in-depth customization on this character. So let's first start with the logo. Like I said, if a shirt has a little logo on it, you can actually customize this logo by uploading your own logo and selecting it. And now you can see, look, his shirt has my company's logo on it. Very cool. Let's head down to the colors option and you can see we can change pretty much everything color-wise about this character. I'm gonna leave his skin, hair, and eyes the same color for his top. We're going to make it a brown, and I'm going to make his shorts brown to match, and his shoes as well. Even the headphones, you guys, we can customize the color. Before we add any animation or speech to this character, I'm gonna drop in another one. So again, let's head back to the studio, back to 3D Creator, and let's drop in our female character. And I'm gonna go in real quick and customize her as well. So I've got my customized characters in here. Let's head down to the timeline and give them some actions. So I'm gonna extend my entire scene to the nine second mark and let's extend Tom as well. So I'm just gonna grab this square and extend this to the same length. And for Lenka, our second character, I'm gonna do the same. All right, let's grab Tom here and assign him some actions. So I'm gonna to select Tom in the timeline, head up to the left panel here, select actions, and let's add a new action. And I'm gonna select pushing object. Now by default, every character has an idle action, and now I've added the pushing object, but I want Tom to start by pushing the object in our scene. So I'm just gonna grab this little hamburger here and bring it on top of the idle action. So he's pushing the object first. And then if I run my playhead in my timeline, you can see what that action is gonna look like. So the first thing I wanna do is flip the direction of this action. So let's head on over to properties and I'm gonna hit this icon to flip him horizontally. And so now he's pushing to the right. 
Now, obviously, if he's pushing something, I need him to move in the frame. So I'm going to keyframe an action where Tom comes in from the left and lands center screen. So to do that, I'm going to head down to my timeline and I'm going to select add animation here. And I'm going to add an animation on position. And then I get these two keyframes down here in my timeline. So what I want to do is queue up my playhead, select this first keyframe. This is this little blue diamond here. And in my canvas, I want to reposition where Tom is. And I actually want him to start out of frame. And then I'm going to head to the end keyframe and reposition him where I want him to land. So right about here. Now I'm going to play this back in real time. And I think it's going too fast. So to slow him down, all I have to do is grab the second keyframe and bring it further down in my timeline to slow down the action. Okay, great. So Tom's pushing something, but we don't see what he's pushing. So what I want him to be doing is pushing a box. Now, if you head back over to studio, we can search for a package, which is what I want Tom to be pushing. Now you can see with this icon here that this package is only included with the all access plan. If you subscribe to Create Studio All Access, you get access to so many more elements that you can use in Create Studio. However, even if you're not on all access, you can source your own images and import them right into Create Studio. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to head over to the media tab and I'm going to select import media and I'm going to import this box cutout and I'm gonna drop it right into my canvas and reposition it in my timeline where I want it to be. So I want the box to end up right about here, but obviously the box is in front of our character. So I'm gonna to grab Tom and drop him above the box in my timeline. And I think the scale of everything looks a little off. I'm actually gonna shrink down this box and I'm gonna shrink down my character. Now I want to add an animation to this box so it matches the move of my character. So select it on the box. I'm going to add animation and position and I'm going to adjust my keyframes to match the keyframes I already have for Tom. Okay, that looks great. The other thing that I'm noticing is that the color of my package that I imported doesn't really match the background. So we're gonna fix that right now. Let's select that box and head on over to effects and components and select filters and drop the filter onto the box. And now I'm going to select the saturate filter. Now it feels a lot more like the color of the packages that are in the background. All right, now let's move on to our female character. What is she going to be doing in this time frame? First, I'm gonna shrink her down to match the size of Tom. And I'm going to, under actions, add a new action and we're going to have her swiping a tablet. Now again, it added the swiping tablet action after my idle action here in the timeline. So I'm just gonna reorder these actions. And then I wanna add another action to our female character. I want her to look at her watch. So let's add a new action and select checking watch. And again, I wanna reorder these actions. So she first swipes the tablet and then she checks her watch. So I've got the basic framework of my project here, but now I wanna start by adding some text-to-speech voiceovers, and that will kind of dictate the timing of all of my actions. So let's first start with Tom. I'm going to head on over to the audio icon, and you can add speech to these characters in a couple of different ways. You can record your own voiceovers or you can use the text to speech function. Now, if you wanna use the AI tool in Create Studio, you actually have to buy credits, but I will say based on the demos that you can see on the Create Studio website, the voices are very high quality. If you wanna buy those credits, just hit the buy more button here. And this is the pricing for those. So for 50,000 characters, characters, it's $15. For 100,000 characters, it's $25. Not super expensive, but if you want to go the free route, let me show you what the other voices are. They have Google Voices enabled here. So let's just do it with the Google Voices. Like I said, they're not as good as the voices in the Create Studio AI tool. So I'm going to enter in Tom's line here and I'm going to select a voice. I'm going to go mail four and I'm going to generate the speech and let's preview it. Man, this box is heavy. Okay, that sounds pretty good actually. I'm going to hit the import button 
And now under my media where I have my logo and I have the box that I brought in, I do have this new text to speech. So I'm gonna drag this into my timeline above Tom in the space where he's pushing the box. Now to make Tom's voice actually move with this voiceover, all you need to do is select the text to speech, right click and select sync with Tom. Man, this box is heavy. And now let's add a voiceover for our female character. So again, we're gonna head back to the audio tab and I'm going to type in Lenka's line and let's assign her a female voice. Generate speech, let's preview it. It's almost lunchtime so you can take a break. Sounds good, I'm gonna hit the import button. Here's my next text to speech and I wanna drop this audio right after Tom speaks because they're having a conversation. I'm going to right click and I'm going to sync with Lenka. Man, this box is heavy. It's almost lunchtime so you can take a break. All right, so she looks at her watch too late for this voiceover. So let's play with the timing of these actions. I want her to be swiping the tablet, but I want her to kind of finish as Tom starts talking. So I'm gonna grab this little square and drag it to shorten up the duration of the swiping tablet action. Man, this box is heavy. It's almost lunchtime, so you can take a break. And then what I want her to do is finish checking her watch faster. So I'm gonna drag that closer. And then they're both idle. Now this scene is really coming together, but I do want these characters to kind of rotate and look at each other more as they're speaking to each other. So I'm gonna show you how you can make these characters rotate around in 360 degree space. So the first thing I'm going to do is select Lenka here. Now, what I want her to be doing is to actually be facing screen right as Tom starts talking to her. And then I want her to spin around as if she's reacting to his voice. Like maybe she was kind of surprised he was there. So I am going to select Lenka in the timeline and let's select add animation. And I'm going to select character view. And now you can see I've got two new keyframes here in my timeline. I'm gonna be queued up to the first keyframe and in my canvas, I'm gonna select the rotate button and then I'm gonna grab Lenka and I'm actually going to spin her around. Look, you guys, it's like a 360 degree view of our character. And then I'm gonna move over to the next keyframe and I'm actually gonna spin her the opposite way so she's facing Tom. I'm gonna give her like a three quarter look instead of a full profile look. So maybe more like this. Let's play it back. This box is heavy. It's almost lunchtime, so you can take a break. That's perfect. Now let's draw our attention to Tom. Right now, he's kind of looking away from Lena, and we actually want him to spin toward her. So I'm going to select Tom in our timeline, add animation, character view. And again, I've got my two new keyframes here. So I'm going to select my second keyframe, hit the rotate button on Tom and spin him around so he's facing Lena. This looks great, but now I wanna show you the last feature I'm excited to share with you about Create Studio 3. We can actually now change the character's facial expressions as they're like reacting to what's happening in this scene. So let's select Tom in the timeline and I wanna change his expression when he's pushing the box. So I'm gonna select pushing object down here in the timeline and you can see there's a menu item for facial expression. It's by default set to none. Let's make it angry. So he looks frustrated. Man, this box is heavy. But then when he's done talking and Lenka tells him it's almost lunchtime, let's set his expression to happy. And for Lenka, we're gonna leave her neutral when she's swiping the tablet, but when she checks her watch, let's make her happy. And when she's idle, let's make her happy as well. Man, this box is heavy. It's almost lunchtime, so you can take a break. So that's how simple it is to create a really in-depth and detailed animation in Create Studio 3 with these great 3D characters. You guys, if you like what you saw today, I will link down to Create Studio below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos, though. I know you're going to love, and I'll see you again.